Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this uh, linked TA class on lithography optics. First class uh, we have clearly understood that how optics is very important, how it is being uh, evaluated in terms of uh, resolution, uh, how resolution is calculated, what is resolution, what is depth of focus, how in actual uh, you know practice or research uh, lithography affected uh, you know, resolution and all this thing. So, uh, in this lecture we will see that how we can go from micro to nano, few micrometers to nanometers and quickly zap through the resolution enhancement technique. However, resolution enhancement technique if I start talking about it will take a uh, lot of time to uh, understand each and every resolution enhancement technique. It is a separate uh, topic altogether. Here the agenda of this particular TA class is to make you people feel that yeah there is a possibility or with the advancement in lithography optics or with the advancement in uh, resolution enhancement techniques we can go from micrometer to nanometer using one particular uh, diff, uh, method or aspect. So, this all things I will try to cover quickly in this particular short TA module. Uh, so, uh, this is but uh, like you know quick recap of what we have seen. Uh, this is a litho sequence out of which what is important task or what is important pro sub process uh, which is important process lithography in lithography which is important sub process optics why it is important already discussed ok. And this is which kind of uh, printing that we already uh, discussed that this is a kind of a projection printing ok. Uh, furthermore uh, this is the formula of uh, lithography we have already seen how to improve this particular when I say how to improve means it can be. Uh, the lowest fine finer uh, microstructure which we can uh, faithfully produce on the wafer and this is a, again a simplistic toy diagram why I say toy diagram is because in actual practice if you see one litho system which is like you know almost 6 to 7 feet uh, of height ok. But this is just a simplistic uh, diagram for understanding purpose right uh, that is what I said I want you people to feel or understand that how this particular. Uh, technique or how a litho works ok. So, uh, this is another uh, uh, illustration of that uh, again a very important point is this is a diffraction limited imaging ok. Uh, probably for the last time I will tell you this top down approach because it is important from uh, micro electrode array development relies on fabrication relies on litho relies on optics in optics also in current research we are still limited by diffraction ok. Diffraction all of us would have studied in our plus 2 that what is diffraction, what is reflection, what is refraction ok. If not I would strongly advise you to just check it once because that will help. Also along with that I would like you to just brush up your basics of interference, what is constructive and destructive interference etcetera right, it will help. It will be a constructive uh, you know interference if you go through that yeah. So, this is like a depth of focus uh, you can calculate using this already discuss how much you can move or how much uh, freedom you can take or how much tolerance is allowed in terms of movement of objective lines it is nothing but depth of focus. Uh, all are empirical formulas so there is no clear cut uh, derivation for that. Again when you change some of the aspects of this, uh, this result uh, formula might get changed. So, there are models for that to model that and all. Uh, improve the resolution which is our main topic in this uh, particular lecture is your resolution enhancement technique. You can use this particular formula R is equal to K lambda by N A. Now, you know mathematically also and in actual pra practice also which parameter can be modified and resulted in which kind of technique and also this is like a overall you know growth what has happened to the course of time ok. Uh, one last thing which I have written at that time to give you people an idea we are in 2023 and even 1 nanometer microstructure can be fabricated. However, this 1 nanometer is appropriate for which application of neural engineering ok that you can do a survey why I am saying this is uh, when you want to record when you want to record from smaller and smaller uh, when you want to resolve smaller and smaller uh, region of the brain it gives you more and more information confined to that particular area ok. And also uh, you need to understand the 
charge density and all this thing you cannot put a uh, very very thinner uh, interconnects or wires uh, which is you know uh, in which a biopotential is riding which is of very high value so there are uh, you know uh, research for that and uh, you can check whether this this particular nanometer width is good enough to record uh, uh, response from few neurons or not uh, because your target if you are targeting a neuron based response it is very 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 small in dimension you require equally small uh, dimension acquisition uh, system or you know acquisition uh, device to get that particular thing so that is why uh, in one nanometer you can see the difference between 2700 nanometer to this nanometer and what is being done now okay so this is all about today's ta class okay so uh, again recap all this thing you have already seen understood and this is the current picture and even current picture and how it has been done again uh, we will go quickly through all the resolution enhancement techniques okay so let us move ahead what is the result ha ah, this is what we have discussed last time right that you improvise each and every parameter and what is the limit of uh, lithography okay now all of you would have considered some or the other parameters okay for k lambda and na okay but irrespective of all the parameters it would be few micrometers okay i am not taking any particular case here okay but based on your uh, understanding about this parameter and the based on your understanding about this parameter which parameter is more optimal you would have taken this particular thing okay and you would have got this particular resolution okay so this is micrometer again but people say that fabricate foundries have fabricated 1 nanometer how it is possible so only this thing is also not enough okay but this is the only thing we have to pattern this particular thing so how can we go even more by improvising this particular uh, system what to improvise how to improvise what are the thing used we will see in this class okay so let us move ahead i told you to check uh, the Fresnel and Fraunhofer diffraction. Okay, when Fresnel uh, diffraction should be used and Fraunhofer diffraction used. Both are diffraction. Then why there are two types? Okay, so based on your application, you need to consider whether it's Fresnel or Fraunhofer. Okay, now in this particular application, we want to produce this mask on the wafer, right? So this mask has this space and line. Okay. Uh, just to give you an idea if this is my structure which i want to present okay this is another structure this is very very you know basic uh, nomenclature for optics and especially litho optics okay you want this repetitive three structure consider this as a three wires uh, guiding some current or some potential something okay uh, and this distance remains constant i'll name it as p okay this distance is x okay same holds here also this is x this is p okay so i just want you to know the uh, convention okay this p is known as pitch okay pitch is nothing but p okay this x whatever you see now here there is a space between two structure so this x is known as space width okay x and this thing not written here let us show it by w okay so this w is nothing but your actual structures width known as line width okay so that is nothing but w so this is like a normal uh, convention which is used in lithography so while explaining this if i say okay space width you should not feel that okay what is space width okay what is line width what is pitch if you remember in the uh, lit, uh, resolution formula k lambda by na okay i have already mentioned about the uh, half pitch that half pitch is nothing but this and this distance between this okay again here as per this example we it almost appears that w equal to x in other terms space width is equal to line width is it always the case no there can be a different structure like this this is your line width 
okay. So, here space width is much much bigger space width in our terminology let us say x whereas, the line width w is very small or there can be structures where you can find this kind of structure where your this is anyway your p okay when you are here this is the case w is less than x I am talking about this case whereas, here w is greater than x okay that is why you are based on your application your line width and space width will keep on changing that is why when you talk about resolution you should consider pitch okay it is just a you know brief idea but uh, before uh, coining all this term I want you people to understand that what is line width what is face width what is pitch okay. So, this is like uh, again our main a uh, simplistic diagram to explain the litho process optical illumination condenser lens actual practice there are multiple of lenses okay to guide the light in exact way you want mask okay objective lens and wafer okay. This is like a uh, overall uh, picture of that which you all of you now understand okay what is diffraction bending of light as it pass through slit or edge considering effect of boundary condition okay. So, again here bending of light will happen in the edge where is the edge edge will be the pattern on the mask okay. So, based on the pattern on the mask that light will travel light will get diffracted and based on the diffraction level of diffraction whether it will be received by this objective lens or not and then further it will get uh, travel it will travel to your wafer this is a overall idea okay. Now, when to use Fresnel and Fraunhofer diffraction okay. So, they are saying x when x is almost equal to d, d is the distance between mask and objective lens okay. So, d is the distance between mask and objective lens in this particular case of uh, we will see whether which one is applicable here our main application in advanced neural science is ME fabrication right M micro electrode array fabrication okay and uh, there it has a dimension of micrometer why I am saying again this thing now because this tells me that the dimension on this mask okay your required dimension will be in terms of few micrometer again you might there might be some uh, you know factor okay you that you have to consider let us say here it is 1 micrometer here it gets reprodu reproduced by some multiple of that micrometer or few uh, like you know if it is 10 micrometer here here you might get 2 micrometer that is based on what is your uh, you know multiple factor of this okay pa it also depends on power of lens and all this thing. But if this is your x is in micrometer okay and as I mentioned lithography system is like a youth system which is uh, of the size of 6, 7, 8 feet okay and uh, their person handles it. So, there will be a uh, controller or you know control computer will be there at the same height of a person around 5 feet or something. So, the, uh, this distance okay or this is your, your d small d okay will be at least few centimeter okay. So, for this particular MEA fabrication application this thing holds I hope all of you understand and are with me because your MEA dimensions will be in micrometer this is the x dimension on your of space width it seems here okay dimension of your space width or overall width it will be few micrometer whereas, this distance can be a few centimeter that is why we are applying a Fraunhofer diffraction not the Fresnel diffraction okay. Like this there is always a basis of what you are you know considering or you know in research whenever you are considered there are multiple ways to deal with a particular research problem why you are selecting that particular way it is very important and there should be a logical uh, scientific reason behind that. So, you understood now that why we are using Fraunhofer, Fraunhofer diffraction okay. So, we will move ahead yeah. So, this thing you have to uh, consider it is very important that uh, Fraunhofer diffraction whenever Fraunhofer diffraction happens okay the diffracted pattern how it is looking like. Now, all this thing as I mentioned light light is electromagnetic wave okay. So, then it will get uh, you know diffracted by something there on mask right. So, then uh, 
what happens is this should be this pattern whatever is there in mask needs to be converted into some mathematical form ok. Let us say this I am considering this particular mask right now ok I am drawing the same thing here some line width some space width some line width uh, consider it as the same ok. Let me just redraw it again uh, ok there is some line width here space width again some line there is some space again some line and there is some space I am drawing it only 3 instant here 5 are there ok. So, we need to quantify this thing ok very important how to quantify this thing. So, this looks like a square wave for electronic student it is look like some square or rectangular pulses ok and I am just forming it as a you know considering it is a digital form ok. So, there is nothing here ok. So, till now 0 0 0 at this point of time I am getting 1 1 1 again 0 0 0 0 in between also similarly you can say there is some edge and all that time there will be a transition from 0 to 1 ok same thing. So, this is what zeros and 1 ok is known as your mask transmittance transmittance ok function again I will not go into the detail but what is mass transmission function this is 0 this is 1 this is 0 this is 1 this is 0 this is 1 this is 0 this is even if further it goes it is 1 ok. So, you are in a way telling or quantifying that what is your input which is coming to this surface ok that is your electrical light and then from this surface your desired pattern will be quantified in terms of this number ok. Now, one more question this is 0 and 1 can it be 1 and half can it be minus 1 this thing will be answered in one of the resolution enhancement technique known as phase shifting mask ok. We will come to that later, but uh, uh, for uh, for now the point is you should know what is num I want you people to realize what is mass transmittance function which is your TM ok. So, when light passes through that particular thing there will be one value when light passes let us say 1 and when light cannot pass this 0 or it can be the either way ok other way around as well. Basically you want to quantify what is the final uh, thing which is passing through this particular uh, mask ok. So, it adds your subjectivity or it adds your desired patterns uh, quantification into the picture that which light is getting diffracted which light is not that is all is your TM. If you cannot understand we will see the example in the next slide is very easy ok, but this is what you can see this f x and f y is some coordinates or spatial coordinates ok. Now, this is known as Fourier optics why Fourier optics. So, if you see this particular formula alone ok you can get an idea that was similar to Fourier transform. What is Fourier transform you have already covered in your engineering I hope and then what it does is it converts time domain thing into frequency domain. Okay. Now, if I say frequency it can be angular frequency it can be this frequency also, uh, but the thing is basically whatever the time domain signal you need to map it into an another domain ok to get more information out of this where is this useful for neural science it is immensely useful for neural science because when you record any kind of signal ok you need to perform filtering after that right slightly I am deviating from this litho optics topic, but as it is relevant to neural science I cannot resist myself I need to inform you that uh, this uh, transform or Fourier analysis when you record any of the signal be it uh, uh, you know your biopotential EEG or ECG, ECG also uh, ECOG ok even FNIRS all this thing once you record the signal you need to pre process it you need to remove the non neural unwanted part of it filtering would be useful there filtering would be based on uh, your Fourier transform post filtering and pre filtering you should see something called spectrum ok. What is spectrum uh, which component of frequency is more dominant generally it is like this frequency decreases uh, as you go from initial uh, like you know after uh, DC offset removal from lower frequency to higher frequency amplitude of frequency decreases ok. All this thing you can 
identify using Fourier transform and you can check whether the filters have applied properly or not by checking pre and post filtering spectrum okay slightly off the topic but it was important uh, in the context of neural science so I just thought of covering it. So now you do one thing this one big you know slightly difficult equation I will name it equation number 1 and this is another equation which is a standard Fourier equation try to see both the equation and compare what you see okay and what are the differences between this two equipment. First one very obvious is that equation number 1 has 2 variables it is a double integral whereas equation number 2 has only 1 integral so that is like standard difference so that is understood to all of us that is fine okay what are the other differences here in uh, you know Fourier transform equation number 2 we have some function of time whereas the above equation we have a some function of mask okay so that is another difference uh, and another thing is here we have a uh, equation of some uh, some function of I said mask mask is a some function of space or you know some uh, particular uh, region or space that is why here in times with respect to time we have time is multiplied whereas here we have some spatial uh, frequency is multiplied what is spatial coordinates and spatial frequency I will come to that quickly. So uh, as I mentioned we had two questions what is Tm here we know very well it is a function of time we have many signals which is a function of time whereas here we do not know what is Tm so that I already explained you what is mass transmittance function what is Fx right here there is a relation between Fxx and Ft so that spatial coordinates which you can see here let me just uh, clear it up for you for better understanding okay so this is your now from this thing we are only focusing on this thing you see things are getting problem is getting narrowed down immensely okay from developing MEA to just mask and objective lens okay this is where we are okay. So again as I mentioned uh, there is a formula for that this is x dash there will be y dash also but we cannot see it is either going towards the screen or you know or going inside the screen or coming out of that. Okay, so based on this distance z okay, and how much it can allow the, I, I mentioned if it is go beyond theta it will go out of lens it will not take it. So based on your maximum theta you are getting this coordinate so this coordinate is known as your spatial frequency or spatial coordinate okay, spatial uh, frequencies okay. again it is a function of which thing your fx or your spatial coordinates is a function of your x dash also y dash also it is a function of the distance z okay. So this is just a overview what is fx, fy, fz and all this thing we will uh, go uh, in you know further how we will see only the one case okay. Let us even narrow it down a bit more we have seen this much okay from litho MEA fabrication we have come to this litho optics from there we have come to only this particular aspect which you can see here from there also let us just consider only one this one particular thing okay. So and then how diffraction works just to make the things easier and also as I mentioned uh, due to this slit it is going here due to this slit also there will be something due to this slit also there will be something when you have multiple waves reaching to one particular point there are possibilities of getting interfered and that interfered can interference can be destructive or constructive. Now how to decide whether there is a constructive interference or destructive interference it will be a function of your wavelength what is the optical path difference OPD if it is n lambda or n plus 1 by 2 into lambda okay when optical uh, destructive interference happen when optical constructive interference happen I will not tell you you can identify interference like class 2 physics very very easy you can revisit that and identify same concept applies lithography and you know getting a proper imaging in one particular point okay. So there are some of the very basic things which we learn in our plus 2 is very 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 helpful uh, when you talk about solving a big problems okay. So this is like as I mentioned let us just focus on one particular aspect which you can see here okay all of you know what is mass transmitter function I already told you this is a space with W 
full width cliff here that is a P okay that is a pitch full width okay. Now this is very very simple mathematical calculation we already know that your final uh, diffracted pattern which is capital T m which is a function of your mass transmission function which is small t m and this is the formula uh, quickly putting up the values you see this thing is everywhere else 0 that is why I showed in red color okay everywhere else it is 0 only during this region where light can travel it is 1 okay. So, where let us just keep it a uh, y axis here minus w by 2 to w by 2 value is 1 rest everything it is 0 again this is small integral you can I, uh, you know calculate uh, you can pause the video calculate the integral and identify it is basically a sink function okay. Sink function sink of x sin x by x okay how it looks like how it plotting and all you can see it is something like this uh, what I wanted to convey is there will be some minor lobes here and there but main thing which is propagating here okay. So, this is like a you know very briefly I am explaining how this diffraction pattern comes out it is not only a function of diffraction pattern also there is a something called aerial imaging which will be covered in the next slide okay and also there will be not everything will be uh, all the diffracted this is like everything got diffracted from here it is a formula of that okay but there will be some spatial constraint that okay we want on between this and this only and all we will come to that. So, this is the case of one uh, you know particular open uh, space width okay what if there will be a repetitive uh, of structure like this this is more or less more a uh, used structure in the field of you know lithography. So, you can see that there is a uh, multiple line width and space width it can be equal it cannot be equal also. So, I would like you people to do this exercise put the values here and you will get this particular thing if you want to uh, see the derivation uh, feel free to write us in the forum we will uh, prepare a derivation and share the link with you and for equal line and width and for repeated line and width there are different formulas this is nothing but a delta function. So, when you see this particular uh, you know uh, pattern it will come something like this okay diffracted due to this. Now, when I say this this central part is the most highest intensity uh, yeah and when you go away from this center the intensity decreases. Also you can see some of the value having negative intensity okay all this thing is diffracted wave further uh, in order to get the intensity uh, this is again electrical fields diffracted electrical field when you talk about intensity of light you need to square it up. So, you will get the overall intensity of the light okay falling to a which particular point this is a again a quick analysis again, one more thing when you say small uh, no this particular feature you vary the width of this okay increase it space width. So, your line width decreases when your line width decreases you want even a finer feature or smaller feature okay and repeat the exercise and check what amplitude you get. Now, this rule says that smaller features gets diffracted more I want you people to mathematically check it once quickly okay when you just you have to put a pen and paper instead of w you can have even bigger space width and try to repeat this particular uh, experiment or you know that repeat this particular derivation. So, you will get an overall idea okay we will quickly move ahead this is called uh, you know as I mentioned aerial imaging okay. So, uh, I have been told you before as well that uh, numerical aperture limits uh, you know it allows a particular range of diffracted orders. Now, uh, you would have uh, learned in previous uh, you know your plus 2 classes and all there are constructive and destructive interference right based on that we get uh, different diffracted order first order, second order, third order which you have seen here in the pattern as well right. So, all this thing uh, you would have seen it right uh, first order, second order, third order and all. So, there are certain orders only can pass through your objective lens right it is like some kind of screening uh, not uh, all the diffracted order can pass through objective lens and finally, contribute to your final images okay and how much can be passed through that okay which is known by pupil function okay. So, so far what we had T m T m is your mass transmission function let me write there only. So, it would be clear for you 
let me uh, so so far what did we have we have first of all tm mass transmittance function what is coming on mask okay then from that we got a diffracted pattern tm okay or even specific if i put it that diffraction pattern can be observed here also okay and then this objective lens say i cannot allow all the orders to pass through because i have finite dimension i have my own function known as pupils function so whenever this pupil function is one or for those uh, coordinates pupil function is one i will pass allow that order to pass through okay so that is nothing but you have, uh, see this thing mass transmission function this diffracted pattern and here whatever comes is nothing but p into tm okay so that is your actual diffracted light which can go through the objective lens which has made through this lens okay and further uh, the lens uh, which is performing imaging okay it's whatever signal is coming is in terms of electric field and finally the light inside the lens which is coming here it can be identified by four inverse fourier transform earlier we have taken fourier transform here for diffraction here we are taking inverse fourier transform to get the final electrical field coming out of that okay very important to have basics of fourier transform and inverse inverse fourier transform if you have any doubt related to that you can ask us in forum and this is your electric field again light this we are saying see very important you have to mention the light light is em waves it can be characterized by electrical and magnetic field why we are only considering electrical field magnetic field is perpendicular to that we can identify one field if we have the idea about the another field so this is your electrical field okay and finally the thing which matters ultimately is your intensity at one point of time what intensity you are getting okay so that intensity is nothing but the square of your final electric field okay so this is very important okay what you are getting and this intensity is nothing but it falls onto your wafer on the pr and based on the intensity of this your pr reacts okay again based on your mask you are getting mass uh, uh, transmission function you are getting diffracted pattern you are getting pupils function you are getting the exact light intensity of the light which is falling here on the wafer and then the important thing is based on the maximum intensity and minimum intensity defines your something called contrast how this contrast affect final imaging okay so contrast is nothing but how higher intensity uh, it is defined contrast is defined if i'm not wrong i max plus i mean by i max minus i mean okay so higher the contrast better it is for you because you are treating your uh, uh, you know this region there will be as you mentioned if mask function is like this you are getting this kind of thing if mask function is repetitive you are getting different you know different orders like this right etc this is an illustration so whenever it is opaque you are getting some form of replica of that particular region so this higher intensity means you are getting very high response or you know high energy light for that it will make it will you know uh, make the pr soluble in that region or the complementary of that so you are getting better faithful reproduction again uh, contrast is another very important parameter along with resolution for any litho process but contrast is more or less related to optics so let's not go into the detail considering i don't want you people to you know get overwhelmed with the different content so yeah this is like zero first and all so if you put some uh, limit here only some of them will go through based on the dimension of your lens and the other whatever diffracted it will get diffracted out and it will not be considered will not be a part of final pro, uh, image that is why exact whatever is there in mask okay will not be exactly same 
whatever is there on wafer okay pattern on mask will not be exactly same on wafer that is why some other correction needs to be done which will be covered in the upcoming uh, slides. So, yeah this is called 3 beam imaging where why because of this thing only 3 beams are allowed considering that one is 0th order first one and minus one ok. Let us say so due to something we are only getting this particular two thing that is called 2 beam imaging ok. There are pros and cons of 2 beams and 3 beam imaging 3 beam gives better fidelity, but 2 beams gives less dependence here by meaning of 3 beam means all 3 beams should come to one particular point at exactly same time to get the faithful reproduction of the imaging whereas in terms of 2 beam the dependency is later. So, 2 beam is better in that case ok. So, yeah now we will quickly see the enhancement technique I hope you have a brief idea about how this imaging and all works ultimately helpful for uh, neural engineering aspects and all this thing. So, yeah uh, let us quickly see the resolution enhancement technique first one is immersion uh, lithography you know by changing NA you can improve the you know resolution at the cost of depth of focus because when you increase the depth of uh, NA uh, depth of focus will be reduced in that case depth of focus will be reduced which means you have very very less uh, precise uh, movement of your objective lens you cannot put it anywhere you want less degree of freedom comes at the cost of better resolution there are studies for that what it does physically is this is your lens this is your wafer ok same illustration what it was there here like this lens and then some lights was propagating this is your wafer on which this is a PR and then it falls here right same thing is here nothing difference but just to give you people an idea ok uh, this is the wafer and which resist tack which is nothing but your PR ok and then there is a water earlier what was there air. If you replace it the intermediate medium by water you immerse a fluid there ok what this is is see there will be some difference for a one particular nanometer line what difference how uh, you know it will also uh, change the your upcoming settings and that is why depth of focus gets affected this is your overall this is done for one particular PR ok photo resist it is a function of which source you are using which kind of numerical aperture you are using sometimes dry means only your normal air where it sums of wet means you can put some water and all this thing for the same numerical aperture you are getting uh, immersion uh, getting better depth of focus. So, why that there will be uh, K2 this is a different system parameter which is involved there I will not go into the detail for that what are the and as I mentioned when you go for higher NA your depth of focus parameter changes these all are empirical solutions. So, cannot be applied in all positions all uh, possibilities all combinations based on different different combinations of your parameters this parameter changes ok. So, for higher NA this is a formula what are the challenges if you want to go for this particular method is first is instead of air you are putting fluid ok. So, you have to control the flow and all this thing with water if you put the water there comes bubbles ok which might result in defects ultimately on the thing because this is at the in between medium uh, from your lens to wafer in between you are creating a defect which will uh, you know affect the light traveling through that particular water and might affect ok and finally there is no air in between and resist tech and there is a water. So, if there might be some interaction of water with PR so that also results in some kind of deformity there are a list of defect which can affect ok. So, these are the challenges but the good thing is it is improving NA and that is why we are getting lesser resolution and you see that improving NA has the biggest uh, contribution in uh, improving your overall resolution right. So, this is one of the method you can check it in detail uh, if you are interested let us move to the other method which is very important is optical proximity correction. Now, I already told you before that pattern ok on mask is not equal to pattern on wafer ok. O entire goal of the fabrication is to make this thing equal but uh, this is like an ideal expectation ok and you all know in real world ideal thing does not happen this is the practical scenario ok. Then why it is not same 
one of the reason I told not all or diffracted orders are welcomed by objective lens right. So, this is one of the reason there can be plenty of other reasons, but uh, the main point is the pattern on mask is not the same is pattern on wafer then what to do to make this happen what you can do is based on experience based on your output and input relation you can train again not talking about machine learning you can train your mask pattern okay or you can in other words better word is you can tweak your mask pattern to get desired response what it does is this is your expected pattern on mask not coming on wafer change the expected pattern on mask add some more detail or you know more structures which will result the actual, actual desired pattern on wafer there there are models for this to identify and this is overall optical proximity correction. So, let us just quickly see that ok. So, uh, this is compensation due to diffraction imaging non numerator this all are reasons possible reasons one of them I already told all are possible reasons you can explore it limitations of light with age projection compensation of line width and all that is fine. This is what I want you people to see ok this is my actual desired uh, mask this pattern I want and what I got here see this right. Uh, this can be due to anything and again you can see that this pattern is here you might have to move it to get the desired pattern ok and uh, this is your you know wafer ok and you are uh, here you see that your entire dimension it is getting reducted and you are getting the same device in multiple wafer and finally, you will dice it to get one device which is here but you are not getting the kind of design you want I am talking about this particular example right this and this is not matching you can see that ok. But then you did some analysis ok you have some magic to add and remove some particular aspect and you uh, change your mask from this to this ok and then you focus it and try to get it you are getting much better design. You see the mask here and mask here again this is not matching but this is what you want ok. So, this is something called optical proximity uh, correction what it does is it keeps the main shape as it is, but by removing and adding some more segments to that it does that particular thing. For that it use some aerial image stimulation model it uses some mask correct algorithm ok and then it checks your final design whether it is verified no then again do the same iteration ok from circuit design to mass design it is a non linear feedback control problem ok and what you are adding your additional aspects and all that is called s wraps sub resolution assist features ok that are used to get the desired design using this thing. Let us quickly see one more thing yeah uh, this is like a known fact uh, that below 250 nanometer you use that ok and uh, process approximation or uh, correction or correlation also performs there are two other methods also see this thing this is one more example it is really good to uh, develop an understanding this is without OPC you are not getting corner uh, you know the, like you know age is proper whereas if you add this kind of serif or SRFs right you see sub assistive resolution enhanced features something like that sub assistive resolution uh, sub resolution assist features ok. So, this is what you are getting it again at 180 nanometer I told be below 250 you have to use it right. 180 you are getting this, but if you go to 130 or 100 nanometer see your things are getting changed by rules and model based OPC. These are algorithms one is based on lookup look tab look table approach other one is you use some formulas and uh, consider CD and all this thing and get this particular done. Now, this is good thing is it is getting better design you can clearly see right better design better performance because even a slightest change will result in the you know it might not serve the purpose ultimately because even a one transistor fails it might damage the entire design of your circuit. So, it is a better yield better resolution better circuit performance it comes with all this thing whereas if I talk about drawbacks what it does is it is changing your mask ok. Now, you are get you want a better mask ok you want a more computation for mask uh, writing and uh, you know your mass infection inspection also should be better. Uh, one thing what we have discussed so far is we have mask and we want generate that particular pattern right. 
how you will get uh, that particular mask. So, there are mask writers available. I would like you people to explore this particular aspect by your end uh, from your end that you know check what are the mask writing, how mask writing happens. But this OPC will make more computational mask writing, will uh, result in more time for mask writing, will result in more inspection time for mask writing as well. All three things comes at the cost of better yield, better circuit design, better resolution that is why it is being used for fabrication below 250 nanometer. Okay. So, let us see one more uh, thing I already told you off axis illumination that whether uh, you know light is going along the axis or off axis normal to the mask or at some angle to the mask. Okay. When it is normal to the mask you are getting 3 beam right 3 beam where it is oblique it might happen you will only get 2 beam. Okay. But this is desirable because it results in somewhat less uh, finer resolution. Okay. It also changes your system parameter k. Remember the formula r equal to k lambda by n a. So, when your k changes you will get a better resolution. Okay. Also it also depends on how you are giving the light whether it is like this kind of conventional, annular, quadrupole, dipole all these things. So, how you are giving the light at what angle you are giving the light de depending on the aperture and projection lens uh, this is the same as your objective lens as well it will decide that which kind of illumination or which kind of pattern you will get on the wafer. Okay. So, this is like uh, I am going slightly faster but just to give you people an idea about 2 beam and 3 beam improves the k and based on ultimately it will result in the resolution enhancement. We can go into the detail, but it will be slightly you know it can be a separate TA class altogether. So, just, just to people give you people an idea just want to tell you or touch upon this topic. Also another thing is your phase shifting mask, it is also very important. This is again your mass transmittance function, uh, your mass transmittance function, then your overall diffracted pattern and this is your finally intensity. Okay. So, this thing decides that you know first point is binary mask what we have discussed so far. Okay. At that time I told you while explaining mass transmittance that whether it will be only 0 and 1 or something else. Okay. If it is something else it is called uh, you know some different mask or you know whether you are trying to uh, you see this thing here it is 1, 0 and minus 1. How this minus 1 is achieved? by putting this pink color thing. What is this pink color thing? Pink color thing is nothing but your uh, chrome glass. Okay. It modulates the amplitude and light. Okay. It modulates the phase of the light as well. Okay. And by changing the width of this you can get a desired uh, you know mask or you know desired uh, mass transmittance function. See all these four thing if you see 1, 2, 3 and 4 all this thing which is changing is the mass transmittance function basically shifting the phase of the mask. If I say here minus 1 it is shifting the phase of the mask. Okay. It relies through uh, on the fact that light passing through a transparent media will undergo a phase change as a function of its optical thickness. Right? The refractive uh, index times physical thickness. So, this is again a formula for that you know calculation for that, but the main part is this funda remains this by adjusting the thickness of the quartz, quartz is nothing but the pink part which you can see here okay, uh, any phase difference can be obtained and based on that you can get a desired pattern. You see this is the same thing, this is the same thing, but here you are getting the finer resolution right? by just putting this thing. Here they have etched up some particular part, okay, so that is called etch quartz marks or based on the scientist Levinson's mask and then also you can see different mass transmitter function different diffracted pattern and you get a desired response. Okay. So, uh, and as I mentioned uh, there are different things uh, like you know this uh, top one which is a red part okay, it is a mass transmittance function energy on mask uh, then blue part is energy on the wafer and then finally the intensity and you know whatever is uh, coming on uh, resistor if you can see that. So, this is like uh, another uh, very important aspect of phase shifting mask you can get the desired pattern I would like you to explore in little more detail to get more idea 
and the finally double layer lithography instead of doing it once you just remove the mask it once and do this there are different uh, you know uh, uh, variants of that if you do it two times that is a double layer lithography if you do it three times that is le 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 but this all comes with you know you have to take care of this overlay which is here okay. So, this all uh, you know final pattern would be a logical or of all three patterns what you can see here okay. Uh, again side wall spacer is another technique uh, litho freeze litho etch litho etch litho etch and you can do triple patterning also and but the thing is uh, there are challenges as I mentioned your overlay should be tighter and uh, not every pattern let us say if you are talking about MOSFET and all not every pattern can be decomposed into 2, 3, 4 uh, patterns. So, for those complex designs you need to think about some alternative what are the alternatives some of the previously discussed technique might be applied and also there can be possibility you use some different form of lithography we are saying optical lithography okay or this projection lithography there are some different EUV uh, lithography and all where you know have more you are getting more resolution and all. So, this is just again to give you people an idea enable you to think about how to travel from micro to nanometer and what are the techniques being used. So, you can explore each whichever technique you want in detail at your own okay. So, finally uh, you know this is the growth in terms of VLSI or you know getting uh, micro electrode arrays or even nano electrode arrays if required from few nanometers to micrometers all this resolution enhancement techniques can be used. You have to be very smart see here they have started using EUV when they go from 5 nanometer even if you go further there might be EUV and some other techniques okay. So, uh, what you can do is you can based on your application you can decide your process flow and you can decide which kind of you know litho technique you want to use and how to tweak the parameters in litho optics to get an overall idea. So, yeah this is what a gist of this two linked uh, series which I would like you people to you know uh, explain and realize that how we are transferring from micrometers to nanometers in order to get different nano structures. So, uh, this is like an overall idea I hope it is clear it is slightly uh, difficult to uh, going uh, uh, through in each one of them detail as I mentioned in each resolution enhancement technique itself is a one class or even we can take a short course on that. But for you people to understand and you know uh, I, uh, the agenda to let you people swim by yourself when it comes to this kind of technique. So, I hope it is clear now you can explore by yourself and if you have any doubt in you in that process feel free to write us in forum. I will see you in another TS session uh, and lab session as well. Uh, take care bye.